हेलो वेलकम टू द ईपीजी पाठशाला प्रोग्राम इन लिंग्विस्टिक्स आई एम प्रोफेसर रविंद्र गार्गेश फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक्स यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे वी विल डिस्कस लिंग्विस्टिक स्टाइलिस्टिक्स दिस इज द एटीन मॉड्यूल अंडर लिंग्विस्टिक स्टाइलिस्टिक्स द टाइटल ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज लैंग्वेज इन किरण दिसाइज नॉवल द इनहेरिटेंस ऑफ लॉस द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव of this module is to give you an idea about the analysis of language in a narrative text which in this case is kiran desai's the inheritance of loss the study of the language of the text will identify the peculiar choices that the author has made within the created context of the text these choices linguistic choices can be categorized according to the different levels of linguistic organization such as phonology lexicon syntax and pragmatics cultural items are also part of the pragmatics pragmatics of discourse you will see that the contextualized foregrounded language in the text has a literary function as well you know that all literature exists in and through language the study of the language of a text reveals the underpinnings that create the language within the text it is through the study of contextualized language of the text that a proper understanding of the text can take place the study of the language of kiran desai's novel the inheritance of loss will provide you with a way of looking at the language of any novel of course the items will be different but the way to look at it that is what you need to understand or get to know within the context of the text there are numerous instances of foregrounded languages now all this is what i'm talking about at the level of phonology lexicon syntax pragmatics there are structures which are visible which stand out which get foregrounded so within the context of the text there are numerous instances of foregrounded language that get manifested in many ways examples like onomatopoeic words lexical borrowings use of acronyms abbreviations code mixing code switching translated expressions reduplications ellipses syntactic variations different kinds or and even transfer of social and cultural elements etc all the significant forms are classified under phonological lexical syntactic and pragmatic including semantic levels of linguistic analysis language representing socio cultural facts is also studied under the pragmatic function pragmatic level all the identified forms have a literary function or you may even call them the poetic function let us look at some configurations of sound sounds are configured in such a way that they provide us additional information than the sound themselves the information could be about the about uh, the sound about music or about the character about the place about the attitude temperament we can get lot of information from the phonological level of analysis some phonological features that mark an individual his or her social identity or emotional states can be easily identified from the linguistic patterns and deviations of course with the context of the text some examples from the discourse of characters such as the cook and biju are being given are being given to you just now a few examples so that we can see how sound configures in a special way as a foregrounded element i take some examples one it is written bad tea but how it was sounded bad tea how was how it sounded bad te bad te another example i don't talk to my relative the third example going to be a big man rich man what you say you want a nice chicken curry 
So all these examples, I've just taken three different examples. They show the pronunciation of English vowels by a less educated man in India. So we have the sounds with extra lengthening of vowel sounds. And uh, these vowel sounds, they identify the person. They identify the class from which the speaker has come. Such speech contextualizations contextualizes the character and brings out the Indianness or the local kind of, kind of a localness. It locates the character actually from where the character comes, the kind of education the characters had from the pronunciation. And in this novel, at many places, the author has written repeated repetition of vowels to show long sounds. Now, we can also find use of onomatopoeic words. Onomatopoeic words can also play a big part, big role in creating local atmosphere. For example, the wind passing through the trees in the forest. So the, the line is, the expression is, there was only the forest making siu, siu sounds. So the sound has been mentioned with the S's and the T's in the text. Another example, the village was buried in silver grasses that were taller than a man and made sound shoo, 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 shoo. So we have onomatopoeic expressions where the sound conveys the sense. Another example, someone would not blow her nose but went sur, sur, sur in the library, laddering up the snot again and again. This again is a onomatopoeic use of you know, onomatopoeic expression. The use of onomatopoeic words or uh, uh, words, it iconizes the sounds emanating in the first case from the forest, in the second case from the grass, and in the third case from the snot in the nose. So onomatopoeia has been used to describe these three, to create the scene. So sounds can be important. Of course, the sounds in uh, narrative are not as important as they are in, the, in poetry, where there are more complex forms. Here, the comp forms are very few. Lexical level is more important than the phonological level in a narrative. Now, lexicon in the form of borrowings, code mixed items, reduplication, translations, hybrid forms, they also play a great role in creating atmosphere, the local atmosphere. Some example of the borrowing of lexical items in the novel can be observed in the examples. I'll mention about seven examples. See the Indianness or see the localness which creates the atmosphere in the text. T is too weak, they said in the manner of mothers-in-law. And not enough salt, they said of the pakoras. Another example, a saucer of milk and a pile of mithai. They had been spilled and pocked by the sleet. Another example, lunch is the missionary boarding house type of thing, thanda khichdi. Blubbery color of mutton, salt and pepper, if you are very lucky, etc. etc. Another example, it was Saeed oddly wearing a white kurta pajama with sunglasses, gold chain, and platform shoes, his deadlocks tied in a ponytail. Another example, thereby angering two snakes, Mia Bibi, husband and wife who lived in a hole nearby. Another example, and the kind of patriotism they go in for turns monkey into donkey, fata fat. Just give them a hot dog on a stick. The seventh example, no ghas phus, no twigs and leaves. In the first, second and third example, we have references to Indian snack, sweets and food. We have reference to tea, we have reference to pakoras, mithai and khichdi. 
So these are in the first three. The lexical item kurta pajama is in four. Uh, that's an Indian dress. And Mia Bibi in the fifth example is a local kinship term for husband and wife. And Pata Pat in six is a Hindi term implying immediately, pronto. And the seventh one, Ghas Phus, is a derogatory term for vegetarian food. All these items are borrowed. And they are, the borrowing helps to create local ethos. Code mixing also occurs when a bilingual or multilingual speaker mixes two languages in his speech or her speech. Here are some examples. One, chalo chalo, another day, another dollar. Second example, bhai dekho, aisa hai, he would begin to lecture them. Third example, are biju, tu sunao kahani, she always said, batao, what is the story? All these are Hindi expressions and they are mixed with English. So this shows that the, the, the low people are speakers are Indians and we have the narration and Hindi and sometimes within the, the dialogue of the character also mixture of Hindi and English that represents an Indian hood of the characters. In the novel there are expressions in English that appear to be direct translations of Indian expressions. This also helps to create Indianness in the novel. For example, first example, please, living only to see my son, please. Don't kill me, please. I am a poor man. Spare me. Apne bete ko dekhne ke liye zinda hoon, gharib aadmi ho, mat mariye. Typical feature of a Indian expression translated into English. Of course, the Hindi version is not given in, in the text, but we know that this is a translation. Second example, no, please, no. Little more time, little more time. Thoda or samay, thoda or samay. So it's again the Hindi expressions, the reduplic reduplicated forms that are put into English. The third example, I will snap my fingers and in one second, hundreds of people will appear. Get out of my face. So snap of fingers. Chutki marte hi. So we have Indian expressions being translated in the text and all these translated expressions provide us an Indian or rather they add to the Indian ethos. So these are examples of literal translations of Hindi expressions where the first example expresses helplessness and pleads mercy by calling him a poor, himself a poor man. And the second one is a polite way to seek more time. And the third that hundreds will appear with snapping of fingers is a literal expression, literal translation of a Hindi expression which is quite commonly used. Such translated forms create local ethos. At the level of syntax, writers often exploit syntactic structures in order to bring the flavor of local culture into their writing. A variety of syntactic features such as repetitions, peculiar tag questions, non-inversion of subject and verb, in forming questions, etc., can be found in the novel. And repetitions emphasize or highlight the intensity of experience or draw the attention of the readers. Some examples are of syntactic repetition. One, he was a martyr, a man, a man, in fact of ambition, principle. Second example, she keeps calling me and calling me. Third example, the more she did, the more she did, the more she did. In the first example, there is a repetition of the noun phrase, a man. In the second one, of the verb phrase, calling me. And in the third, the whole clause or sentence is repeated thrice. Repetitions here are syntactic devices used by the author to draw the attention of the reader to the facts emphasized. Ellipsis, that means something is missing. It ellipsis refers to gaps represented by three dots in the text. And this refers to either to intentional omission or a linguistic item or word or a process of ongoing thought. So the three dots, either something is missing or someone is thinking, the thought is jumping. I give you some examples. <clears throat> one example, he thought of his wife. He was, he was one month married man. He would return dot dot dot. Many years from now, dot dot dot, and then what, dot dot dot. 
it was all very strange she was 14 years old and yet yet to properly examine her face now the first example the judge is thinking about his wife and thinks about the time one month after his marriage then his journey to england and return etc pauses in such quick pauses in such quick reminiscences are natural for they represent jumping of thought from one subject to another now we take some example of code mixing code switching these are examples of language mixing which entail the use of two or more languages in the same speech structurally language mixing can be categorized into two code mixing and code switching in code mixing use of two languages is intrasentential whereas in code switching it is intersentential both these categories of mixing occur in speech event of bilingual or multilingual speakers some examples are one hamara kya hoga hi hi hamara kya hoga he let his voice fly hi hi what will become of us second example the judge's mouth was a straight grim line go sit in the kitchen bad bad karta rehta hai both the above examples represent code mixed varieties these examples contain expressions of hindi language and are mixed with english expressions in the case of the judge they show his arrogant nature and in number 1 someone demanding pity now we'll come to non inversion of subject and verb and drop of auxiliary verb in forming questions the formation of interrogations or interrogatives without changing the position of subject and uh, subject and auxiliary or with the drop of the auxiliary is perceivable in the utterances of the characters of in the narrative some examples are you are indian hot dog another example you are married both these are questions in these examples the auxiliary verb has not been moved before the subject you we know these speakers are indians with a rel relatively low level of education deletion of auxiliary verb and lack of subject verb agreement we could take a couple of examples first example indians everywhere in guyana man second example the tribes they always are scared of the answering machine the auxiliary verb are missing in both the examples this is widespread the drop is widespread in indian english of people who are relatively less educated in english in india then we come to the pragmatic level of analysis the post colonial writers use the strategies to localize their texts by incorporating cultural elements through similes metaphors idioms and proverbs and old sayings from their native languages which are unique to their customs and cultures so we find these such things also within the novel so transfer is the most important process of transposing social cultural and religious elements from indian culture into english language some of the examples of transfer are as follows they dipped the merry and delight biscuits in the tea drew up the hot liquid noisily second example utterly butterly delicious third example in stone town they ate samosas and chapatis jalebis and pilau rice example 4 tikka masala tandoori grill navratan curry dal makhani papadum example 5 stock up on haldiram's premium nagpur chana nuts that you must have that you must be missing in order to localize the text the author transfers a variety of social elements into the text in order to evoke indian ethos in the text the narrator transfers indian brand names representing biscuits and indian brand of butter snacks and delicacies of food now we also look at cultural elements and religious elements which are transposed into english in the novel one example respected pitaji no need to worry everything is fine the manager has offered me a full time waiter position uniform and food will be given by them angrezi khana only no indian food and the owner is not from india he is from america itself 
सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल बोमन भाई बेंट ओवर विद नमस्ते एंड बेग्ड हिज गेस्ट टू ईट एंड ड्रिंक थर्ड एग्जाम्पल ही थॉट ऑफ हाउ ही एड हाफ अनड्रेस्ड एंड हरिडली रीड्रेस्ड हिज वाइफ ऑफ हाउ ही हैड ओनली ग्लिप सर एक्सप्रेशन जस्ट बिट्स एंड पीसेज ऑफ इट इन द स्लीपिंग पल्लू ओवर हर हेड अनदर एग्जाम्पल से जय गोरखा दे सेट टू द जज गोरखा लैंड फॉर गोरखाज जय गोरखा से आई एम अ फूल एंड द जज रिपीट आई एम अ फूल लाउडली कांट हियर यू हजूर से इट लाउडर ही सेट इट इन द सेम एम टी वॉइस जय गोरखा सेट द कुक एंड जय गोरखा लैंड फॉर गोरखाज अनदर एग्जाम्पल मेड द एरिया अराउंड इट क्लीन विद काउ डंग एंड डिड पूजा सो कल्चरल एलिमेंट्स आर विजिबल इन ऑल दीज एग्जाम्पल्स बिसाइड्स द ट्रांसफर ऑफ सोशल एलिमेंट्स द ऑथर ट्रांसफर्स कल्चरल एलिमेंट्स वेरी एप्टली इन द फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल द टर्म ऑफ अड्रेस एज अ कल्चरल आइटम हैज बीन यूज विद ऑनर फिक्स अफिक्स जी एज इन पिता जी फॉर फादर इन द सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल आकर ग्रीटिंग नमस्ते इन द थर्ड एग्जाम्पल द कवरिंग ऑफ द हेड विद द साइड ऑफ अ साड़ी इंडिकेट्स बैशफुलनेस इन द फोर्थ एग्जाम्पल स्लोगन फॉर गोरखा लैंड जय गोरखा लैंड एंड इन द फिफ्थ द कस्टम ऑफ प्यूरिफाइंग अ प्लेस विद काउ डग फॉर वर्शिप द ऑथर यूजेज पॉपुलर स्लैंग्स एंड अब्यूजिव लैंग्वेज विच वी विच कब विच वी हियर ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स इन इंडिया in order to bring the local regional flavor in the text some examples of this almost abusive language is pigs pigs son of pigs suwar ka bachcha biju shouted second example ullu ka patha son of a owl low down son of a bitch indian third example the unadulterated agar came out sala fourth example the green card green card the machut sala ullu ka patha 420 The derogatory Hindi expressions indicate son of a pig, son of a owl. The kinship term for brother-in-law, that is, wife's brother, colloquially used as an abuse in India, highly offensive abuse. In slang, all these function as an important device for creating strong Indian flavor in the text. These features of oral colloquial speech also lend the atmosphere a sense of informality and immediacy. Use of literary devices such as similes and metaphors are expressive of creativity and function not only to pictureize but also to communicate a special significance. Examples: first example, spiders lay scattered like dead blossoms on the attic floor. Second example, soul that trembles like a candle. Third example, eating momos dipped in chutney. Gyan said, "You are my momo." Sai said, "No, you are mine." so simile is used in the first two examples while in the in the first example there is a comparison between dead spiders and dead blossoms in the second between the soul and the tremulous candle the third example has a metaphor where where gyan compares his then beloved sai to the delicious momo it's an implicit comparison in the first two there are explicit comparisons we now look at free indirect discourse uh here is a passage they sent him to england and 10000 people saw him off at the station he went on top of an elephant with exclamation mark he had won you see a scholarship from the maharaja in this passage there is absence of reporting verb like someone said as well as absence of perform perfective auxiliaries the second sentence is exclamatory which is not a feature of indirect speech but that of direct speech so the occurrence of the elements of direct speech in indirect speech function to express immediacy and topicality there are very many instances of free indirect discourse in the novel so the the passage that was cited is not a dialogue now the arrogant language used by the judge as discussed in uh, the previous module represents a typical colonial mindset i will not take any examples because we have taken enough examples in the last module He is dealing with different people in India, including his wife and father. Reveal that he is a highly presumptuous, colonial-minded person. So refer to that language in Module 
Similar traits are shown by some other minor characters like Lola, Noni and Mrs. Sen. The common feature in all these characters is that they belong to the upper class of society. For they have money, big houses, as well as the presumed colonial superiority complex. All this is reflected in their use of language as well as in their liking for foreign goods. Now to summarize, in this module, you have been exposed to the language of Kiran Desai's novel, The Inheritance of Loss. The examples provided by no means cover the whole range of syntactic structures or the other structures, but they do reveal themselves to the reader through contextualized significances. We have seen that a writer exploits linguistic resources at the levels of phonology, lexicon, syntax, pragmatics. The text under analysis revealed repetition of phonological features or the singular use of onomatopoeic expressions. The lexicon also revealed repetitions and of use of local words and the discourse in English. At the syntactic level too, repetitions and some peculiarities like non-inversion of subject and verb in, in interrogatives occur. Many Indian expressions have been translated into English in the novel. Most of the linguistic peculiarities and repetitions represented in the language are commonly used by people of relatively lower socioeconomic groups in their everyday lives. Now if we look at the novel in totality, the title is The Inheritance of Loss. The language of the text, the way the characters behave, what they do, it all shows that there is a loss of values, there is a material loss, loss of human values, and there is more suffering among the major characters. So there is also a, uh, uh, the past of the colonial mindset which is there in the people in the present and the present is very different. So there is a mismatch in the colonial mindset and the present situation and all this is marked in these situations and through language.